Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to return to a series that I did a while ago that apparently, when I looked at my analytics, was pretty popular. So, I figured I would feed the algorithm a bit and give you guys what you seem to want. So, starting a new Magikin of Nurgle army in Age of Sigmar 4th edition at the end of 2024, for those of you that might be watching this in the future, um, it, uh, you know, so you have a little bit of a timestamp and know when we're talking about specifically. But uh, a lot of this is going to be pretty generic stuff for you so that you have a broad idea of what you're looking at getting into the army. Now, before I jump into, you know, specifically what you're looking to buy for this um, and, you know, kind of how to actually get in, like, model-wise into the army, I just want to talk about, like, who this army is for, what the strengths and weaknesses, pros, cons, what it does and what it doesn't do. So things that this is really a strong army on, uh, it's very durable. That is what Nurgle does. You are going to sit there and save lots of attacks. You're going to uh, heal back quite a bit. You're going to slowly grind down the enemy, slowly march up the field. Um, you have a relatively low model count uh, in this army, kind of uh, mid to low, I would say. It's not like super low, but you, know, you can easily have um, a list that has like you know, 25, 30 models tops, which is pretty fairly low. Um, you're also pretty good at debuffing the enemy, although that's kind of like a secondary sort of thing and usually is mostly in service to um, uh, augmenting your durability. So sometimes that durability means you're going to hit your opponent with like, you know, their unit is minus one to hit or something like that. Uh, so things that you're weak at. Mobility. Uh, this army is generally very slow. Even their fast stuff is slow. Uh, their fast stuff is not much faster than the slow stuff in fast armies. So, uh, if that made any sense at all. Uh, we don't have a lot of offensive power here. You're not going to be just slamming through the enemy. You're going to you're gonna stick and grind. That is what this does. Uh, there's no prayer lore in this army, although there is a priest. So, that is kind of odd, hopefully, uh, when an actual battle tome for this comes out. Um, sometime in 4th edition, uh, that'll get changed, but I'm not uh, overly optimistic about that. Um, this army is currently challenging to maximize its strengths. Like You have to kind of understand what it's doing and how it operates to really do well with it. And if you don't, um, all the defense in the world isn't going to do anything for you because you don't know how to you know, get moving up the field and grind out your opponent well. So, let's get into how we actually start collecting this. There's two boxes out currently. Or actually, the Shutterblight system I don't think is actually launched yet. Um, but uh, these are your two boxes that you can pick up towards the end of 2024 that um, are going to be good starting points for collecting this army. First, you have the Spearhead. This is like your evergreen box that we're going to have around for a while. Uh, it's going to give you two uh, Pusquoil Blight Lords. Um, alternatively, uh, one can be built as a Lord of Afflictions. Uh, then you get a unit of ten Plague Bearers, five Putrid Blight Kings, and a Spoilpox Scrivener. Uh, altogether, this is a pretty decent amount of points. This is six or seven hundred points in one box, at least at the current points levels. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is really staples. Your Puscoil Blight Lords have historically not been that strong, and they're not that strong currently, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to be good in the future, and it also doesn't mean that they're not going to be serviceable for you if you're just getting started. Uh, Plague Bearers and Blight Kings, absolute staples. They're your, your main troops of this army in general, so having plenty of them is going to get you pretty far. Um, I think if you're starting a new army, grabbing two spearheads is probably a really solid way to go to get into Maggotkin. Uh, then we have a battle force this year for Maggotkin. That's going to be two units of Pusquoil Blight Lords, a Harbinger of Decay, 
a unit of Blight Kings, and then a unit of Rottmeyer Creed. This is another very interesting box. Um, once again, not going to go back over the Pasquale Blight Lords. Uh, Blight Kings, obviously a staple, and they tend to come in like every box. Um, that Rottmeyer Creed is, I think, an underrated unit, and it's always interesting and fun. It does a thing that this army doesn't typically do that much, and that is ranged attacks. So they do have some shooting, and otherwise you don't really have shooting in this army. Uh, and then the Harbinger of Decay, he's your priest in this army. Um, he can do some interesting things, uh, but otherwise, I mean, he's a really sweet model. Uh, great to have in your collection just for the aesthetic purposes. And like like I'll say with many things, is that it, there's not a lot in this army that's total garbage. Is a Harbinger of Decay going to be in your list in a top table tournament army? Probably not. Is it going to be just fine for you getting started on the tabletop? 100%. Uh, a great hero addition for your early armies. All right, so some historical boxes that you can probably still find hanging out uh, on eBay, in random Amazon shops, in you know your local game store hidden in the back somewhere. Um, the most recent one was the Dawnbringer box. Uh, it was just a unit of Puskoils, a Harbinger of Decay, and Blight Kings, um, again, went through all of the contents of this before. Uh, it's probably, like, if you're interested in those models, it's probably just going to be a cheaper way to get all of that than just buying each one individually. Um, Demons of Nurgle box, uh, the Start Collecting. Uh, this is, you know, the boxes that came before the Vanguards and the Spearhead boxes. Uh, they were a little bit smaller, but same idea just a place to get started. The Demons of Nurgle box, it has a Poxbringer Herald of Nurgle. Uh, so that is your uh, demon foot wizard. So nice little addition there to get some magic into your army. Uh, three of the Plague Drones. Those are another solid addition. They're cheaper than the Puskoil Blight Lords and have a bit of a different role. They're tricky to use, but they uh, can certainly have some interesting play in the army. Uh, some Nurglings, not currently that interesting, uh, but historically they've been fun and a bit underrated. Uh, so you never know with the rules. You know, I'm kind of touching on rules here and there, but the big thing is, you know, are these staples to the army uh, over the long haul? Um, the Nurglings, probably not so much. The Plague Bearers in this box, however, definitely, and those Plague Drones have, you know, on and off been uh, valuable things to have. And then our Magakin of Nurgle start collecting. Uh, basically the same as the Dawnbringer box, except you got a Lord of Blights instead of that Harbinger of Decay. So really, the five boxes that I've gone over here, any combination of like two or three of these is a really good base to get your army started, get up to like about 2,000 points, and you know, you're good to get off to the races. You know, it, your real staples here are Plague Bearers, and Blight Kings. And then the rest of the army is kind of seasoned to taste. So uh, a lot of good options here. The army uh, roster is not huge. Most of it lives in heroes um, as far as that goes. And those are relatively inexpensive to pick up for the most part. All right, so what do we buy next? So um, Sloppy Bile Piper, he's one of the strongest uh, things in this army, both currently and historically. I don't think they're going to take anything away from him ever, really. Uh, they had to power him down a little bit in 3rd edition, um, but he was still really good afterward. Um, your Great Unclean one, that's like your big centerpiece model. Uh, he basically has always been strong, and you know he's really the focal point of the army, so I think they would be really uh, off the mark if they made a book with this guy being bad. Uh, and at very least, he's cool, and he's like 500 points, so he's filling up a ton of your army. The Feculent Gnarlemaw, that is your terrain piece that you get for free in this army, so certainly worth having one of them. Um, they don't really need more than that, although you could potentially use up to three in your army with the current rules. Uh, Morgue Plague Bearers, always good. They're not a ton of the boxes that are available that are going to get you more Plague Bearers, 
So adding those uh, for a couple of additional purposes, pur purpose purchases, if I could speak. Oh my goodness. Um, and then Beasts of Nurgle, those are always fun and interesting. They're a cool, uh, cheaper piece that is going to get you some interesting play. Plus, they're just fun. You know, they're big, slobbering, slug beasts with uh, a personality of a puppy. So they're cool. They're fun. Uh, overall, this is my favorite army. That's why I hit this one first uh, in these videos going to be doing more of these uh, for folks that are looking to get into other armies and uh, also be on the lookout for a video just kind of generically on how to uh, find your way getting started in Age of Sigmar overall. So that is it for now guys. Hopefully this was helpful out there to uh, new players, people looking to get into Magakin of Nurgle for the first time. And if you have any other uh, questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. Uh, or shoot me a message on you know Facebook, Twitter, whatever, uh, in the social media links below as well. So that's going to be it for now, guys. Thank you as always, and I'll talk to you all later.